Hi everyone, uh, welcome to SFT Live. So this is actually the first episode in a series of live videos that SFT is going to be hosting over the next week. And we actually, uh, as a group, as a team, SFT International knows that um, the time that we're kind of all going through as a community right now is unprecedented. It's one of the most difficult things that we as a global community have gone through. And because of that, there are actually millions of people around the world, many of you watching as well, who are on quarantine at home. And at SFT International, we actually felt that this is this is possibly a good opportunity for us to reach out and see how we can help the community. And one way which we thought we could help many of our supporters and viewers that are at home on quarantine is by providing um, a platform such as SFT Live, which is our new series that we're launching. Uh, and this series, kind of the goal of this series is twofold. One is to, you know, give company and uh, content for those of you on quarantine, uh, entertaining hopefully as well. And the second goal actually is to ensure that um, people while they're at homes, while they're at their homes, um, can also still engage in the Tibetan movement. Because at the end of the day, Students for Free Tibet, our core goal is to stand in solidarity with the people of Tibet. And we want to make sure that whether you're on quarantine or not, um, you have the opportunity, you know, to get engaged, to learn about the Tibet movement and to take action for Tibet in any way that you can. So today's the first episode, as I mentioned, and we have a really special guest. Um, I also want to mention before we begin that today's program is going to be done in English language. And in the future, we will have SFT Live episodes that are done in Tibetan language. So for example, our episode tomorrow is going to feature a Tibetan uh, frontline um, frontline community who's basically working on the front lines of the medical response to coronavirus. She's as a, she's working as a nurse right now in New York City and uh, she's done a lot, you know, to help combat the situation here in New York, which has gone um, quite dire and really deadly. And so there'll actually be a session with her where um, our viewers and supporters can hear a little bit about what's going on on the front lines of the fight against coronavirus here in New York City, directly from, you know, the point of view of a Tibetan nurse here in New York. And that entire program will be in Tibetan language. Due to the content and viewership of today's program, we're doing it in English language to make it accessible to as many people as possible. And so now I'm actually going to go ahead and add our guest for the day to our live video. Here we are. Yeah. So Hi. as I mentioned, our episode today is going to be uh, making Zampa cake with Chuni from Little Tibet. And Hi. so just to start off, uh, we have Chunila here with us. Uh, Chunila, can you introduce yourself? Hi, Tesh Nile. Uh, my name is Tenzin Chini, and uh, I'm a partner at Little Tibet. We started Little Tibet in 2013, and uh, since then we've been running it. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Chunila. And we're so grateful to have Chunila. You know, uh, Little Tibet has been like a staple of the Tibet movement, you know, in New York City for a long time. SFT has hosted a lot of events and fundraisers and concerts there as well. So we're really grateful for the longtime support of uh, Chunila and also the, the whole team at Little Tibet. Uh, so today we're going to start off with the Zampa cake recipe. And then yep. we're going to hear a little bit uh, throughout the process as well about Zampa and about uh, the cultural, political significance of Zampa to uh, the Tibetan people. So uh, Chunila, what's the first step for making the delicious Zampa cakes? Okay, before I go any further, it's just a disclaimer. I want to tell everyone, if anything goes on fire, it's not on me, okay? Because <laughs> I'm not the chef. The chef is behind the camera. He's doing the video. He's clicking the video. Please. So, are you ready? Awesome. I also want to add that Zampa cake is like the best dish ever. It's really popular at Little Tibet. And also, we specifically wanted to do it because it's a little bit on the easier side in terms of the recipe. So that means that everyone at home can follow along and really get like the full benefit of the recipe, yeah. Awesome, thank yeah. you, Chunila. Okay, so if you're ready, I actually uh, told a lot of people about the ingredients that you would need. First of all, we have butter, right? Um, for all those people who are actually very conscious about their uh, the food that they're eating, they wanna be healthy, you can skip the butter and choose a healthier option. 
there is sugar. You can go with brown sugar, white sugar, doesn't matter. This is tampa, first of all. Okay, I should have highlighted this first. Tampa, okay. It's a staple Tibetan uh, food that we eat, as uh, Pim already explained it to you. Then in this here, we have some honey. And hon, where did you put the blueberry compote? I'm just kidding. So this is all you need. So tampa, sugar, I mean, uh, butter, sugar, tampa, and honey. And uh, if you want some garnish, uh, yeah, you can do any kind of garnish in the end. Okay, mm -hmm. so first steps first, you need to take any utensil, just heat it up. Oh, that's on the doctor. Okay, let's do with the rest one, doesn't matter. Okay, so take a couple of uh, sticks of butter. Uh, it depends upon you how much butter you want to take. Uh, I just, since we are doing a cheat day today, I'm going to put all that butter in. So it depends upon you how much butter you want to add. And also, because it's a cheat day, I mean, sincerely, all the quarantine has been a cheat day <laughs> for everyone. So, yeah, you can go ahead. After, when you come out of the isolation, it doesn't matter. We have plenty of time to run around. Okay. So until then, uh, Pema, why don't you take it over? The yeah, sure thing. So while the butter is getting nice and melted, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the cultural and traditional significance of sampa. So the word sampa in Tibetan refers to ground up roasted barley. Uh, and scientists have actually found traces of barley in uh, 2,100 year old remains of tea inside Tibet, which means that Tibetans have actually been eating sampa for literally thousands of years. And since uh, tampa has been a part of Tibetan cuisine for so long, it's also a huge part of cultural and religious ceremonies. So many people have heard of like samso, where you stand in a circle and people will use tampa during prayer and throw it up in the air. Um, but there's also another tradition in which tampa is burned um, as a form, as an act of compassion towards the tantalized spirits that exist uh, in a special subdivision of Buddhist hell. So this means that they actually cannot eat, they only eat through smell. So when we burn the tampa, it actually uh, is a way of showing compassion to those that are stuck in a realm of Buddhist health. And it allows them to, you know, find, um, find nourishment through the smell of tampa. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to pass it back to you. Okay, perfect. So you see the butter has melted, right? Don't burn it though. So I put it on the medium flame right now. Uh, sugar, once again. How much ever are you do you have a s sweet tooth you can add as much sugar you want to add but i'm going to make it sweet because i don't care i'm a mother i can gain weight i can save <laughs> for my baby <laughs> so how many spoons did you add to uh, Janila of the sugar oh I, I mean it depends upon you okay great. so yeah if you want to make it really sweet tampa is very forgiving so i mean uh, it'll soak up all the sugar and the butter so i mean in the end you don't really feel it Mm -hmm. it, it's not yeah it doesn't make the so it actually cuts down the sugar so i mean i'm uh, melting the sugar right now be sh make sure that you don't burn the sugar because otherwise it'll get caramelized so you want to make the sugar uh i mean the crystals should uh you, you can you should see the crystals a little bit okay the sugar crystals okay so it's pretty good now we're good uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the tampa so make sure that the amount of tampa that you add that it does not get overly dry so you see you can add more tampa here okay so I want to tell you, I mean, usually a lot of other places won't share this recipe of their best seller, but we're doing this because we love you all. Yeah, and it really is a best seller. It's like an incredibly <laughs> popular dish. <laughs> yeah, and people are going to hate us because we charge $5 for this simple recipe. Oh, uh, no, not at all. It's like a <laughs> presentation and everything. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it looks pretty good, but I think I'm going to add a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So when you see that the tampa has soaked up all the butter and the sugar in it, it's pretty good. And now I'm going to cut down the heat. You can go ahead, Pema, uh, with what you have to say, because this I'm going to cool it down a little bit before I work with it. Sure thing. So while Chila is uh, stirring and cooling down, uh, in addition to the cultural and religious significance, Tampa has also played a huge role politically in terms of the Tibetan uh, freedom movement. So actually, at the time when Tibet was first occupied by China, um, there was not the same you know, unity that we imagine today in terms of dialect and um, the region. Tibet as a, as a country was so big and there wasn't as much communication between all the different regions. And so there was some concern at the time that Tibetans wouldn't be unified enough to take a stand against the Chinese invasion and occupation. And so actually, two years after the first invasion from China, uh, an independent Tibetan language newspaper called the Tibet Mirror actually published a letter, an open letter in their paper calling for people to rise up against the Chinese occupation. And at that time, they, they wrote in their open letter, they actually began the open letter by saying, we, the Tsampa eaters, the chuba wearers, dice players, raw and dried meat eaters, followers of Buddhism, Tibetan language speakers, we must make the effort to end the Chinese occupation. So this was decades ago in the 1950s. And the first thing that the Tibet mirror uh, kind of said about the unification of Tibetans was that we are all Tsampa eaters and that no matter which province you're from or which area, what dialect you speak, we are all uh, people who, you know, rely on barley and sampa uh, for our main form of sustenance. So I'm going to pass it back to you, Chimila. Okay, so the sampa is uh, cooling right now. So what we have here is uh, we made a mold uh, just to make sure that we put the sampa and it takes the shape. You can use anything that you have lying around at home. So this is a DIY project. Um, we got that steel somewhere <laughs> and, we, and we made a move because the one that we had, because uh, it's in the restaurant and because we are in an isolation, we can't go out to get it. So we're making the best of everything that we've got a mold here. As of course, yeah, it's important to stay in quarantine. So. Yeah, so that's why uh, we, this is the Everyone has to do their part uh, when you're in quarantine or isolation, wherever you are. We, I'm grateful to SFT for giving me th this chance because it's keeping me sane <laughs> doing this video. Okay, so I mean, it it hasn't become the best of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've definitely made a mess on the sides. It, it's not looking as clean as, as I wanted to. I'm but sure the taste okay. is as good, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's ready now, and then you can break it out of the mold. Okay. Hopefully it does work. Okay. Okay. So yeah, while you're trying it, to like... I'm sorry? Should I add another commentary while you flatten it up? Oh, yeah, 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 please. Perfect. Uh, so in more recent days, in terms of um, the uh, political atmosphere inside Tibet and the, the freedom movement inside Tibet, um, in 2009, um, there was still kind of a continued rise in the idea of the importance of Tsampa as a unifying factor for Tibetans. And in 2009, there were protesting monks inside Tibet who would actually cry out, rise up, all Tsampa eating Tibetans. And in particular, also in 2012, there was actually a protest, a form of civil resistance inside Tibet, where the protesters would actually eat Tsampa and throw it up in the air while uh, chanting mantras uh, as a form of protest against the Chinese occupation. So we can definitely see that Tsampa has really found its way into um, the Tibetan you know, political atmosphere. And we also see it in the music and the youth culture. In 2012, uh, the famous Tibetan rapper Shapale, uh, who also spent a lot of his childhood in Tibet, released a song called Tsampa on YouTube as well. And the, it was playing in the beginning of the live. So if you didn't catch it, you can actually rewind back after the live video is over and listen to a little bit of it. 
And there was actually featured some bowls of sampa and traditional bags used to store sampa grains um, during, in the video as well. So that's pretty cool if you guys want to check it out. It's on YouTube. It's just sampa by Chapale. So yeah, let's keep going with the sampa cakes now. Okay, so as you see, I cleaned up the plate while Pamela was speaking. So uh, you can use any garnish you have at home. I kind of had an apple. It looked good. It gave it a little bit of color to the tampa, so I put some apple slices there. Then you can use any ice cream that you have lying around at home. Usually I prefer vanilla, but we've been at home for about a week now, and we finished our vanilla ice cream. So I had Oreo, so, so I'm going to put that there. It looks pretty okay, though, right? It looks delicious. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I have honey here, so I'm going to drizzle a little bit of honey. Um, if you, any of you folks think that the sugar was not enough. Okay. There you go. Voila. It looks uh, delicious. Sampa cake is ready. <laughs> <laughs> so you have sampa cake a la mode. Wonderful. That looks delicious, Jungila. I'm sure the audience, if they've been following along, they probably have a delicious sampa cake ready to eat as well. I know. It wasn't, it wasn't hard, I was it? Not at all, no. And we're going to share this video again so people can actually follow along at home later on with Chumila oh, and okay. make the sampa cake on their own, you know, in quarantine. Yep. And I'm just going to make everyone jealous and eat a bite. <laughs> mm. Amazing. So for those of you who are following along and making the sampa cake, now is the chance you guys can enjoy your sampa cake. And we're actually going to just chat a little bit with Chumila, you know, um, in addition to being a fabulous Tampa cake demonstration model, uh, we also want to hear a little bit from Junila about you know, some of her experiences and whatnot. So I'm just going to start off with a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Tampa cake is such a popular dessert at Little Tibet. Uh, how did that recipe kind of get included into the menu? Was it, was it like, what was the inspiration for that? Yeah, so definitely when we first started the restaurant, it was... We had a business mind, of course, everyone who does business, they want to make money and everything. But for us, it was that aspect of it. Plus, mm -hmm. we wanted to do, showcase um, Tibetan food, Tibetan yeah. culture. And what better way than uh, opening a restaurant that features Tibetan food? Uh, we realized that back then there were not a lot of uh, Tibetan restaurants that did authentic Tibetan food, maybe a couple. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to jump in and raise the game. Yeah, and it's like a really cool contemporary take on Zampa as well, which is oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, that, was that the question, Zampa? Yeah, that was one of the questions. Okay. Uh, the next question was, in addition to being a, a great chef, you are also one of the business minds behind Little Tibet. You, are, you did a great demonstration. So, in addition to that, you're also one of the great business minds behind Little Tibet. And it's a you know prominent and bustling restaurant and it's become a staple in Jackson Heights. Um, how do you think that, um, you know, in your opinion, food has really intersected with Tibetan culture? And do you think that it has an intersection with the Tibetan resistance for struggle and freedom? Definitely. Uh, so first of all, I, I want to say this. I'm no, I'm no chef. By no <laughs> means, I'm not chef at all. So uh, the restaurant was run by Lopsang Shafel, who's the chef. And uh, I'm the face, uh, if I could say that, uh, of Little Tibet. I use, I, I do the front of the house and Lopsang does the back, he's the chef. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but you know, talking about uh, the intersection between uh, our restaurant and the cultural resistance, um, as a restaurant, we realized that we could do so much to promote our culture. Mm -hmm. And also because um, of a lot of organizations that were uh, coming up or were already organized, um, they needed a platform where they could, you know, kind of get together and talk about things that they were very, uh, you know, uh, passionate about. So mm -hmm. I think Little Tibet, I hope we did, um, gave them a platform where they could come together and share their stories, talk about what experience they went through. I mean, as much as we loved serving food, we loved that people came to our restaurant, just had a cup of tea and talked about, um, you know, things about, anything about Tibet, be it, uh, you know, 
about uh, the freedom resistance and uh, anything, you know, mm -hmm. about politics or religion. And when it was not busy, we would sit down with people, folks together, and just have a chat. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, the restaurant did really feel like a community every time I, I came there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so in addition to the things that we mentioned and your role at Little Tibet, um, you're also, you know, a Tibetan woman here in New York City who uh, shares with the same story as many Tibetans living in exile around the world. And I would love to hear a little bit about, you know, and I'm sure the viewers would as well, about uh, what your specific connection is to the Tibetan movement and, you know, throughout your childhood and youth and today as an adult, uh, what have been some sources of motivation for you in supporting the Tibetan movement? Oh, uh, yeah. So as far back as my memory goes, uh, I can remember uh, going for every March 10, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the uprisings that there were. I'm from Dalhousie, a small town in India, and I remember taking part in every uprising. I, I, I have never missed a single uprising, and this year is the only year where I missed it because uh, my baby was too young for me to go out. I, I can, yeah, I can say that. So, and besides that, every opportunity that I get where I can volunteer, where I can be of any use, be it, you know, uh, in terms of manpower or financially, I've done, we've done actually our best as, uh, after I met my partner here as a restaurant or um, individually, I have mm -hmm. made sure that um, I took part in everything Tibetan that there was out there. Yeah, incredible. And I mean, um, from everyone at SFT, from, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, I know that the movement that we have today would not be possible without you know, the supporters, the countless supporters around the world like yourself, Chumila. Oh. Uh, and thank you so much for helping out with the demonstration today. And uh, you know, for answering all of those questions. It was really incredible. And the last question that I have uh, for you today is, uh, if you could share one message, uh, particularly with young people uh, yeah. around the world today about how they could support uh, Tibet and the Tibetan freedom movement, what would your advice for them be? I would say just do whatever you can. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there are uh, times when you think that whatever you're doing is not enough. But as they say, every drop matters. Every drop makes an ocean. So any contribution that you can make, small or big, doesn't have to be like $1,000 or anything. Even you being there <clears throat> in a pro protest or volunteering, for example, uh, for organizations like SFT or uh, Tibetan Youth Congress or any Tibetan um, organizations that there are, even Tibetan community, uh, now we have a very strong Tibetan community coming up in New York, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, yeah, there are so, repertoire of things that you can do. So, yeah, you can help in any, any way. And if you um, want to know things that you can do, you can always go to SFT's website and uh, see where you can uh, contribute. Yeah. I didn't tell her to say that, by the way, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, SFT paid me to do that. <laughs> That's actually incredible advice, though. It's really true. It's uh, no matter what your passion or your skills are, there's always something you can contribute to the movement, whether you're a business person or you like cooking, whether you like music or fashion, you know, there's always something that you can contribute such that. And Chunila is, you know, yeah. a great example. And the whole yeah, team at Little Tibet. Sorry to cut you, but that's yeah. how I started. I, I've been a volunteer for so many years for SFT, and then I uh, graduated to become a regional coordinator mm -hmm. for uh, SFT. And that's how now, you know, it, it, the experiences all build up. And then, I mean, I think that's what makes you the person you are eventually. Absolutely, yeah. And as a regional coordinator for SFT, I know that uh, Chingla did a lot of awesome work here, you know, around... Um, New York and around the East Coast and US. And so that's really kind of what powers our movement at SFT. It's the youth leaders and it's people stepping up to take these leadership roles and giving it their best. So that's really incredible. And thanks so much for you know everything you've done uh, throughout the years and also for taking the time to chat with us today, Jamila. Oh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I had a great time cooking for you. Awesome. And it was great to have you here. And the viewers, just hang on for a couple more minutes. We have 
a really quick announcement. Um, we can say bye to Chumila for now. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Awesome. So the last thing that we have, it's going to be um, pretty quick. So if everyone can just stay on for another minute, that would be really appreciated. Um, uh, so that was awesome. And I'm sure some of you are really enjoying your sample cakes at home still. And, you know, for like someone like myself and all of us at SFT for activists and change makers, really none of us like being confined to our homes. But right now, uh, staying home, staying in quarantine is one of the best courses of action that we can take as a community to to actually help save lives. And um, we don't take that lightly. So we hope that all of you are also staying in, inside and you know following the rules of the quarantine or whichever city you're in. But that being said, it does not mean that we cannot keep making uh, a difference for Tibet. We can still do something and there's still a lot of ways we can get involved. And each of our live uh, episodes coming up for SFT Live will end off with three ways that uh, you can help the Tibet movement from the confines of your quarantine. So uh, today we have two that are going to be specific for U.S. listeners and then one which is specific for everyone in the world. And moving forward, we'll have different types of actions that you can take. These are all things that are actually relatively easy to do, have a big impact in our opinion, and also don't require you to leave your home. So you can do it under quarantine. The first one is uh, to call your elected officials here in the United States. And many of you probably know that the Tibet Policy and Support Act, uh, also known as TPSA, was passed in January of 2020 through the House of Representatives. So that was an incredible victory for the Tibetan community and for you know all the people working really hard on this, like those from ICT and uh, SFT chapter leaders and community leaders from around the US. And I also wanted to just highlight what this bill will do because it's, it's incredible, it blows my mind actually. So this bill, if passed and signed into a law, would mean that the US government's official policy and stance uh, towards the selection of Tibetan Buddhist leaders would be to uh, follow what the Tibetan community wants, what they wish and um, what their traditions state. And that includes um, listening to the advice and instructions and guidance of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama in selecting any reincarnations, including that for the next Dalai Lama. So as a Tibetan and as a Buddhist, we all know that this is really important for our community. Uh, and that's why it's so important for us to advocate for this. And another thing it would also do is forbid the Chinese government from creating any more consulates, Chinese consulates here in the U.S. until a consulate for the United States government is established in the capital of Tibet, of Lhasa. So as many of you know, there is no consulates inside Tibet, which means that there's kind of a blind eye inter internationally and no one can really see what's going on inside Tibet. So having a consulate there would play a tremendous impact in political and human rights um, for Tibetan people living around Tibet. And so what we can do is we have, after this video, you can check out our link in our bio. We actually have a homepage and every, they'll say SFT Live and they'll actually be one that's called TPSA, Tibet Policy and Support Act. And there you can actually see the language of the act and see information so that you're well informed. And then you can look up online who your senator is and whether or not they've co-sponsored the TPSA yet. And if they haven't, you need to ring them up and say, this is why I believe um, you as my representative as a senator should support TPSA. And for example, if, you, if they have already signed it, then you can also still give them a call and thank them, let them know that uh, you know American citizens and those living in the U.S. around the country are watching and do care about this issue tremendously. The second thing is the U.S. 2020 census is coming up, and so this actually applies for all Tibetans, Taiwanese, Indians, and other ethnic ethnic groups. By showing up for a census, you are actually showing representation to your group. So, for example, when I set up a census, I would have to click, uh, check the box which says other Asians, and then let's say type in or write in. Um, I would actually need to write in Tibetan as my ethnicity. And this is important because when the government can see, can everybody hear me? Okay, thank you for letting me know, everyone. Hopefully, you can hear me. Let's see, hopefully you can hear me now, but actually the census for 2020, it's really important because it shows the government how many people of a certain ethnic group are living in different neighborhoods. Uh, and you don't need to be a citizen to do the, to do the census. 
And in particular, if you are, you know, a young Tibetan who speaks Tibetan and English, it's really important to reach out to other people, you know, like um, elders in your family or in your community and help them also fill out the census. Every individual would, should, should and can fill out the census. Um, and the census will determine, you know, resource allocation for different communities and access to uh, resources such as translators or community center grants, everything um, about the U.S. government funding is kind of determined through census, which is only done every once, uh, once every 10 years. So it's really important for us, especially as younger Tibetans, to take the initiative, um, those of us who know how to use computers and those of us who know how to fill out online forms in particular and speak Tibetan and English, even if your Tibetan isn't excellent, that's all right. Um, just making sure that you can help out the elders in the community as well to fill out the census when you have time. And the third and last, thank you for everyone that stuck around. The third and last um, action for today is um, for anyone listening, whether you're in the US or anywhere in the world, uh, is to take action for Tashi Wangjuk. So if you look in our bio, we also have another link, which is called uh, SFT Live, Tashi Wangjuk, New York Times mini documentary. So if you haven't already seen this mini documentary, it was uh, created by the New York Times. And actually at the time when they were recording it, they have you know live interviews with Tashi Wangjuk, who is a language rights advocate from inside Tibet. And by the time they even released this video, unfortunately, Dashi Wangjuk was actually sentenced, arrested. And he later, one year later, had a trial and was sentenced to five years in prison as a political prisoner. And all of everything that, all the punishments that he received was solely because of um, the responsibility and ownership he took over advocating for young Tibetans' rights to learn their mother tongue. Um, so with that being said, as an international community of language rights uh, supporters, and especially if you're a Tibetan or if you are someone who cares about human rights and language rights, uh, making sure that we watch this mini documentary so that we can hear his story and amplify this message that he literally um, went to jail for because he knew that he would possibly be persecuted for the message he was taking and the stance he took. So as an international community, um, we can take a step from inside our quarantines by watching the documentary and then sharing it on our social media with our friends. And there's also on that link in our bio, another link which says Tashi Wangju petition. Once you've watched the video and you know about his story, you can actually sign the petition uh, to call for his release. There's just one under one year left in his term now. And um, his, his term is actually ending uh, in prison in January of 2021. And so now is a more crucial time than ever to raise his to raise his story because the last thing that we want is for Tashi Wangchuk to be unfairly detained or arbitrarily kept past the end of his five-year sentence, which was already an unjust sentence. So those were the updates for today. And those are the steps that we can take um, from quarantine today to help the Tibet movement and amplify the stories of Tibetans inside Tibet. And I really hope that everyone enjoyed the um, tutorial that we had with Chungi La and some of the tidbits of information that we had uh, about Sampa, the history of Sampa and resistance. And we have tomorrow another SFT live episode. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the live, for those who weren't there, we are going to be featuring uh, Chimi La, who is a uh, medical healthcare professional living in New York City, who actually supports and has been working on the front lines of the fight against coronavirus here in New York City. And as many of you know, it's um, been totally uh, chaotic and crazy with coronavirus here in New York City. So the courageous, brave uh, individuals that have taken a stand, there are Tibetans among them, and we have the opportunity to hear directly from one of these frontline healthcare workers um, tomorrow. So I'm playing the song in the background, uh, Tampa, which everyone should check out as well. And that's all for today. Tomorrow's program will be fully done in Tibetan language. And we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's 11 a.m. And it's going to be from our Facebook Live on SFT International. So that's Students for a Free Tibet uh, International's Facebook page. And we'll be going live uh, interviewing in Tibetan language a uh, frontline healthcare worker. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today.